If you're watching this video, you're probably thinking about building an 11 and a half inch SBR or pistol. I'm gonna go over my rifle and everything I put on it so you can make some informed decisions on what you might wanna use on your rifle. Before we start, let's safety check this bad boy. There is no magazine, no round in the chamber. We are safe and clear. All right, let's go over my rifle. I'm gonna start at the muzzle device and work my way back to the stock and talk about everything I have on here. First, up in the front, I have a Surefire muzzle brake and that muzzle brake is the mounting device for my suppressor, which is a Surefire RC2, which is behind me right here. And the muzzle device is attached to a Criterion core barrel. It's 11 and a half inches. It's got a mid-length gas system. The gas tube I'm running on that is an adjustable superlative arms gas block with a mid-length gas tube so that I can adjust and tune this rifle to run with the ammunition that I'm running with that suppressor and to reduce the amount of gas that I'm getting to my face. If we take a look at the right side of the rifle, I'm running a mod light. This is an OKW head and a Surefire tail cap. And that is on a Arasaka mount. It's on the flat mount. It's not on the one that curves towards the rail. Uh, the flat one will work nicely if you're running a PEC. I'll show you. I'm going to muzzle the camera for a second. On the opposite side of my flashlight, the left side of my rifle, I'm running a Ferro Concepts QD mount along with one of their QD swivels. And I have that on one of their slingsters. This is the padded version. Moving back, I have a Midwest Industries front sight that's intended to be used with the front profile of the PEC-15. Moving on back, I have a PEC-15. And I have my laser and my light wired into two mod buttons. Uh, the front one is for my light, the rear one is for my laser. And those are in an HRF dual ramp mount, which tilts the front button forward and the rear button backwards. And below that, I have an emissary development hand stop, which allows me to have a spot to keep my hand and index for my fire buttons. And I can also reach the fire button on the peck itself if I need to. Continuing rearward, uh, we'll talk about the optics that are on here. Uh, so this is an EOTech EXPS 3-0, and this is a EOTech G33 3X magnifier, and both of those are on Unity Tactical risers. I need those for when I'm shooting night vision. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier for me, so my nods are not hitting my rifle. Moving down from there, I'm running a Dirty Bird bolt carrier group. The dust cover came attached to this already as part of the kit, and also the 45 degree safety from Radian came as part of the kit. The trigger that I'm running is a Geisley SSA trigger. That's what I run on all of my rifles. I like to keep it consistent. Moving to the rear, I have a B5 grip. Moving up, I have a Radian SDSL charging handle. This is the version that has the cutouts on it for gas mitigation. Moving back, I have a Volter A5 gas tube. Inside of the gas tube, I have a Springco green spring and an A5 H2 buffer. For my stock, I'm running a B5 Systems SOP mod stock. And this is the version that has the storage tubes in here and I just keep some CR123 batteries in there. Um, I have this EOTech zeroed for 36 yards and this is just a dope card for all of my holdovers. This is basically what I'm using on the flat range inside of 100 yards, which is what I have available to me out here. I'm sure I can engage things out to two and 300 yards, but that's probably the max distance I would use this guy out until. Uh, I hope this video helped you make some decisions on things you want to use on your rifle. And in the meantime, get out there, keep shooting, and I'll see you in the next video.